in this week's episode. I'm talking to Granata Getza from Dell in Brazil about how she got into sourcing, what to consider when sourcing in Latin America, and how she supports 23 recruiters. Welcome to episode 25 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Longren. I started off by asking Granata how she got into sourcing. I uh, have a psychologist degree, mm -hmm. and then I made a post undergrad in people management. And I always wanted to work with, uh, with people and uh, huge organizations. And I, ne I was never like a, a psychologist to work in, in a clinical perspective. Mm -hmm more in recruitment and selection and the organizational piece. So I started working in big hospitals mm -hmm. okay. uh, where I was born in Santa Catarina State in Brazil. And then I worked as a, a recruiter for uh, leading recruitment selection and also all the, the training uh, for the leaders. Mm -hmm. So we had some academies, some behavioral trainings and everything. So uh, I changed uh, from Santa Catarina to, to Porto Alegre, to Rio Grande do Sul. I got married and then I came and I started, um, I started over because in Santa Catarina, I, I knew a lot of people, a lot of companies. I had my name there, my professional name. And then when I, when I came to Rio Grande do Sul, that is a very different culture. Mm -hmm. um, I started over. And then I was hired in Stefanini, uh, that was uh, that is a, a multinational company regarding information technology. And I was like, okay, I, I don't have the experience in information technology, like project managers or developers, and yeah. I had to learn everything. And at that time, the director told me, okay, Hinata, we know that you don't have the business acumen, but we are hiring you because of your positive attitude yeah. and uh, the potential. And then I learned a lot of things there. I stayed Stefanini for uh, four years and a month. Okay. And uh, when I came back from maternity, I was leading um, HR functions mm -hmm. and intellectual capacity programs and uh, recruitment and development. I was hiring for IT. And then, then I, when I came back from maternity leave, I decided that it was time to, to have new challenges or meet new people yeah. and and then I subscribed to Dell and at that time uh, there was a director there an HR director that is not with us anymore in the company and I said hey Lou it's time for me uh, I you know that I have the English skills you know my the kind of uh, my work looks like and yeah. how I deliver results and everything and she said oh we have a position in talent acquisition to support IT group. And I said, okay, let's, let's talk. Yeah. And then I was hired in 2010, in December, and I have a, a nine months baby. <laughs> and I said, okay, so I'll have to, to adapt and to have like 70 IT positions open <laughs> and also a baby. So thank God I had a good nanny. <laughs> yeah. And I started at Dell. In December of this year and I had a lot of workload I reported to a, a director in Brazil mm -hmm. and I had my peers and and I tell we have the the recruiters split it and divided per business unit okay and then I stayed there for one year and a half and then I moved to the sales piece to recruit for sales mm -hmm. um, since the beginning of the the, the uh, small companies until the largest one okay to hire uh, people from sales and then uh, I stayed there for more like um, six years and then on October last year 2007 and 17 sorry uh, it opened a sourcer position uh, for LATAM mm -hmm. and I applied Oh, cool. I got ready and everything because at that time I had only support Brazil. Yeah. So I didn't know much about LATAM and I said, okay, so I have to study. I need to learn. <laughs> I need to have the knowledge and I need to have it fast. And then I applied, I got prepared and I got the role. So I am uh, working as a uh, sorcerer for LATAM at Dell for 10 months mm -hmm. now. And I support all the recruiters in the region. They are based in Brazil, Panama, Mexico, Costa Rica, and Argentina, and Peru. Mm -hmm. And then they support the business units in, in these countries. And I, I give support 
and I support them regarding market intelligence, mar mm -hmm. uh, marketing data, talent mapping, and all the sourcing function. And what, what mm -hmm. kind of roles are you supporting them? Are you supporting all the business units as well? or All, all of them. So <laughs> sales, <laughs> because now um, the, next week we're going to have another sourcer. There is an internal talent too. She, she used to be from TA Center of Expertise, yeah. and now she's becoming a sourcing tool that is Evelyn. So uh, then we are going to be split it. We don't know yet if it's going to be per bridge, per mm. country or per, per business unit or per recruiter. But now I support sales, IT, uh, uh, customer care, uh, marketing and all the, the roles. So it's, it's been a very, very uh, development opportunity for me. And imagine. I've been learning a lot, especially this multicultural experience this regional understanding in the way people want to receive information, the speed they want to receive information, the, the roadblocks that we need to, to work on, and uh, the personalities of each recruiter, mm -hmm. and to be far from them, how do I connect with him, yeah. with them? And, and um, my, my job basically, my purpose is to to give all the information and or to share and create information to recruiters so they can deliver their best so this okay. is my my purpose mm -hmm. and what's been the most difficult country to for you to to support i would think by now it's gonna be mexico mm -hmm. uh because in mexico our brand maybe is not so strong as okay. we want it to be and we have in mexico uh, it is a big country yeah. some um some things regarding the culture or uh, the way they want to receive information and the market there is very very aggressive and competitive mm -hmm. we have lenovo we have ibm we have all the the main hps the main competitors dell competitors are there yeah. and they are very aggressive regarding uh, salary and compensation and benefits so uh, we are trying to to increase awareness uh, regarding uh, Dell brand influencing higher leaders and we are uh, making some unconscious bias trainings mm -hmm. uh, to have more female and people with disabilities and everything is cultural of course but it's also a very very drive for results team yeah it's a very it's a country that is emerging in terms of economic conditions so, uh, but it's been, it has been challenging because we are a little understaffed there. Yeah. So we are bringing another recruiter. So the team has a lot of workload there right now, but we have a strong team there, but it's not an easy uh, country to find talent because for Dell, uh, it's not the experience only. We need people to have fluent English, mm. to have this regional understanding, we need to have we we have to be competitive in terms of salary in terms of benefits in terms of brand and one thing that i usually do is to um sh to tell the story why are you gonna find a dell uh, mm, why yeah. uh, you should come to dell and and what are you gonna find regarding the company our erg groups our diversity our values so it's 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 working pretty good and what i mean working with recruiters obviously as well like coming from somebody with a lot of, lot of experience when you are working yeah. with new recruiters are they used to working with sourcers or is it very much something you have to kind of educate them on on what you can support them with we had previously uh, uh, uh sourcers but they moved for mm -hmm. another roles or another regions and one of my uh, main pillars because my work is is split it like in three big pillars mm -hmm. education the, the kind of the, the partnership educate and share new tools and enhancements with the recruiters uh, let them understand how we do a talent mapping they already do but how we deep dive and refine the information how we present information to leaders mm -hmm. and the part of projects and the part of the specific niche skills yeah. so we need someone like for big data in a specific country what is the economic scenario the legislation the the main players so when they have a hard to fill position and they have like aging regs and I, I don't know what else to do. 
mm. to fulfill this position? Do you have any idea, any tool? Because they don't have access of all the tools that I, myself as a sorcerer have. Yeah. Have these three pillars, education projects and, and aging regs or niche skills are the three ways that I use to support them. It's kind of new to them mm -hmm. to have an active sorcerer yeah. with them. In the beginning, I, I make that diagnosis and I create a survey uh, about what do you expect yeah. uh, from me as a sorcerer? And it came a lot like partnership. I need someone to tell me if I'm going the right way or giving me some inputs, ideas or solutions that will drive me to the right way in terms of speed and quality and mm -hmm. customer uh, service and satisfaction. So it's been very good. I work with them like in regular one-on-ones meetings to understand any sourcing requests. I have some templates that I use for them to fulfill and tell mm -hmm. me what do you need. And I participate with them in the, the intake sessions uh, with the hiring managers to understand what they need and what are the expectations. I, I'm very close um, to them, to all of them, all yeah. the 23. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh -huh. can, yeah, you can have a meeting with everybody um, once every two weeks and then you can just start over again. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I usually do every two weeks mm -hmm. and then in the, the week that I don't have with you, I have with the other one and everything and not, not, uh, they don't have a sourcing request all the time yeah. because we have a very, very strong team. The recruiters are, are capable to deliver, but we see uh, the sourcer like a SWAT team. Yeah. Okay, we need speed, we need more information, we need more market mapping because what the business wants is proactive pipeline. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of workload and sometimes the recruiter won't let an open position to make a talent mapping mm. or a, a proactive pipeline. He, he or she wants to fulfill the open requisition. Yeah. So the proactive pipeline is something that I, that I do a lot too. Mm -hmm. And then you were talking about tools, like you would have other tools than, than the recruiters. What's your kind of go-to yes. tools and, and what do you like working mm -hmm. with on that? I had to learn a lot about tools because, okay, sometimes people think, okay, you are a sorcerer, so you are the expert in LinkedIn recruiter. <laughs> yes, but not only that. I use Talent Newton from mm -hmm. CEB, a lot of CEB, Gartner. I use a lot of Chrome extensions. Uh, I use uh, some intelligence web search and websites, uh, multicultural sites, uh, job boards, um, I use a lot of the, the LinkedIn talent mapping to catch referrals and to yeah. make benchmarkings with the main players to understand, okay, let me know about the tools that you use, the, the websites that you go for, because I have this and this and that. And for my surprise, people always receive me very well mm -hmm. and we share experience chrome extensions some some uh talent neuron because it gives me a broad perspective regarding uh, uh big picture yeah. numbers and uh some studies that i that i look i use a lot of google on how to look forward uh big data talent and a lot of networking i think the key for the sourcing role is the, the, the quality of the networking that you have. Like, for instance, big data. I never worked with big data before, mm -hmm. even when I was an IT recruiter, because it's data science is something very new. Yeah. So I had to know regarding what is the differentiation because, uh, uh, between an architect and, an, and a big data engineer, what they do, why they don't do, what are the certifications or the knowledge, and then, I reached to an IT director that was my, my client before and I said, hey, I need your help. I need a name of a person that is the big data top that we have at Dell for teaching me what I need to do to make a better sourcing. So yeah. what I mean here is that the more specific information we have, more detailed and qualified will be the sourcing uh, for that specific request that's what i've heard a lot of people do as well they're like well i don't know yeah. so i asked the team and it's about well if i have to uh -huh. find this the best the best source for that is asking mm -hmm. people who do the job and find out you know, what do you do explain it to me and and where where would where would i look mm -hmm. for people like you yeah and sometimes we, we learn a lot from the candidates yeah 
because they are doing the, that job and you don't know anything about it and then you learn with them too you know but i have to know about dell yeah i have to know about the role i have to know about the expectations of the business but the person can can show me oh tell me what you do and how you do it so the networking is the base of everything for yeah. sure in this role and where like other than googling things like where would you where do you go to to learn things either with you know recruiting and sourcing or or for the specific role? Uh -huh. i do a lot of uh, searches in ceb mm -hmm. it's like my bible mm -hmm. for sourcing because you have everything there and there's a lot of of uh content there uh i do a lot of research because i i made some signups in specific bmis and yeah. toolkits and research mercer research and research of this and this and that so i receive reports like today i think i have 15 uh, uh, uh specific pages and websites where i receive information and these websites take me an to another one and to another one and then i go researching like some of uh, when we are ending college and we make some researches from all of the the, mm. the spaces, and then I I make my I use one note and I have like a sourcing library mm -hmm. where I include everything that I learn that I hear from and the request and everything, and I write my own my own notes from the everything that I take in the in the internet and also some trainings that I do mm -hmm. uh, regarding sourcing for diversity, sourcing for this and this and that. And then I participate in a lot of uh, free or paid uh, groups that uh, sourcing groups inside LinkedIn, sourcing groups inside Facebook or any other uh, kinds of groups that I can learn from and, and have more details. So it's also about digging information and and check if it makes sense for what you're looking for because there's a lot of information so yeah. a lot of reading and books and <laughs> like full stack recruiter yeah. and good to great and everything that you can take uh lessons from for of for uh, of course this is for sure the best way to to do it what's uh, something that you're working on now like a new project or something like that that you're really excited about after i came back from vacation my my boss gave me like oh you're gonna be the the ta uh, focal point for diversity <laughs> in latin america and diversity is something that i um there is a, a diverse culture a diverse mm -hmm. company diversity is a pillar for us we truly understand that diversity gives us best results and people feel more happy when we have a diverse team and then i have a project called sales female talent mapping mm -hmm. because we find we found out that in our sales leadership positions sometimes in our internal succession plan we are missing uh, uh, women, we yeah. are missing female talent. So we made a survey, we are studying how we, where we stand uh, on and which step we are internally comparing with market data. So I am leading this project in the region and we are mapping four countries, Panama, Brazil, Argentina and Mexico that are the ones that we need to have more female talent pipeline to present to the business. Mm -hmm. And now we are mapping uh, all the female regarding uh, pre-sales and leadership roles that we have, like senior managers or directors. Yeah. And we are talking to these, to these ladies and understanding what they'll look like for them what they they how they feel inspired and what is important uh when they think about a, a, a career changing mm -hmm. and like something like work, work life balance and compensation and having time with my kids and everything yeah. and to leverage to 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 show women at Dell that how they truly add value to the company and why do we need more female talent in leadership roles not only in sales in every kind of roles yeah. but in sales is the more, most difficult especially when we are talking about pre-sales that is more technical yeah. like storage or hyperconvergence or things like that that we don't have enough talent but we need to create this awareness and to influence women to apply for positions at Dell and if they are not applying why they are not applying what mm -hmm. are the reasons be behind it because it's very hard because they think it's it's not going to be good because they they don't see a career development adele so we are mapping 
in this specific country, especially female. And we are also mapping people with disabilities too. The, the, the most important part and the purpose is to, to attract and retain and develop yeah. uh, female talent so they can uh, actually see their potential, have the right tools and mentorship to help them to, to achieve their career goals. So it's yeah. a very, very nice project that we, and it takes a lot of work and hard work and time but it's worth it in the end. We see the purpose. So yeah. it's totally aligned with, uh, uh, with what we are. And Dell is something like to, uh, our purpose is really to, to help with women, uh, with um, human progress. Yeah. So uh, females have everything to do with that. So here we are. What's some things that you would like to, you know, to work on in the future in terms of like in this, in the sourcing, there's so much to what you do and to the sourcing world. And what are some other things that, that you would like to have time for in the future to work on within Dell? I think that I have the challenge now for the next semester or mm -hmm. the next yeah. year to, to refine more my business acumen for each country regarding uh, what the market is saying, the economy and, and the legislation and what we are able to offer or not map and get to know more and more the candidates to create this consistent and close relationship with all of them mm -hmm. because sometimes they are a lot and and okay i i have this pipeline going on but sometimes i don't have the time to give the attention for everyone mm. so i like to deep dive on that now that i'm gonna have a peer is gonna facilitate <laughs> that and to hear more about what the business really wants and yeah. how they foresee our business at Dell from now to two or three years and yeah. how I can, I can support them in a sorcerer perspective mm -hmm. and what they expect to hear from me and match that with what the markets offer and, and make this detailed uh, study. And, and that's my, my purpose and my challenge for the, the next semester or year yeah. And, and that's what I want to do. If there's people out there with companies that either already recruit in uh, Latin America or they, they, you know, they know that they have to recruit in Latin America, like if they're from Europe or North America, what are some of the things mm -hmm. that, that, like from your experience, that they have to think about or, you know, the challenges that they will have? I came from Brazil to recruit for Latin America, but I'm yeah. still in Latin America. Exactly. So I think the, the first thing is to don't think don't take things very in a personal way mm -hmm. because when we are talking about the us and europe and latin america there are a lot of differences regarding culture economic scenario the way we communicate if you take i don't know someone from the us you can expect a more objective and direct communication mm -hmm. from the europe the same thing Latin Americans used to be more effective and more uh, related person and, and they want to talk and they want to bond with you. Yeah. Not that the other regions don't, but in Latin America, everything becomes, uh, begins with this relationship. Yeah. So you have to bond with people and, and create trust. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to create trust. Everything uh, 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 begins with the people trusting you and you knowing the people that you can trust. Okay. Because when you trust someone, you can tell everything, you can count. When you don't know who, where to go, this person is going to help you, of course. The other thing is to understand the culture of each uh people of each country, yeah. how is the economic scenario, because this will affect the kind of offers that the recruiter does or, or the, 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 the selective process, because everyone wants the best candidates, but yeah. sometimes we are not able to afford, mm -hmm. the candidate doesn't want to come. And another thing is to learn from is, what is the purpose of the company and how do you attach that with the the purpose of the or the objectives of the people that you were talking to yeah what the candidate want are you able to support that and be realistic be very transparent be, be very ethical because sometimes and especially in some countries in latin america in brazil we are living this right now like corruption and everything so sometimes 
people, what they want to see, what they expect is for you to be ethical and transparent yeah. and, and to, to make contact, to have this com consistent communication. So I think the relationship, the culture, the trust, and the way business are done in, in each country. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think these are the main challenges. It can be done, of course, but you need to understand uh, uh, if people are, are really willing to to relate relate with you, and you have to build this 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 bond. Because mm -hmm. if you don't build trust, it's gonna be hard for you to to support and and to deliver the results that you need to deliver. So I I'm very fortunate that when I I joined the the sorcerer role, I was very very welcome. Uh, uh, by the team, and 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 the team really is open to hear my ideas. They are very open-minded. They are very uh, excited to have a sorcerer yeah. and say, "Hey, I can count on you." But of course, it's not only the trust. I need to deliver the results in the time they want. So it's a lot of effort to genuine put yourself in in the other uh, person's shoes and say, "Hey, I need to do that, and I need to deliver my best." So in the end. Uh, uh, the results matter, but if you have a strong team and you you build this relationship, of course you are going to to deliver the best the best results. So this I think is the are the main challenges. It's something that should be the same thing in every country. But I yeah I know with Latin exactly. America it's it's much more of a you're not going to get away with not being like that, and that's that's exactly a lot of recruiters could learn from that because it is very much that relationship building and you can't just like you know come in mm -hmm. and like i'm gonna offer mm -hmm. you a job i like that and i think we could all learn from that not that the in, in the us and, and europe uh, people don't have it but it's different yeah. the way you relate is different because i i relate to people in the us too and what you need to show is how strong you are delivering your results and you have to be very detailed and the person has 30 minutes with you okay uh, show me what you have and everything so in latin america okay how are you tell me about your story <laughs> tell me about your son tell me about is this bonding thing that you feel comfortable and then you can show what you were willing to to deliver or yeah. you uh, are already delivering at that time. So I think that is the main difference. If um, if people want to keep in touch with you, Renata, or, or you know, see what you're what you continue to be up to, um, how can they best do that? They can call me on um, uh, send a message in LinkedIn. They can send me an email. They can call me. Uh, <laughs> they can call me on Facebook or any because I'm I'm very open to that. I I, I learn a lot with networking and mm -hmm. conversations. Right after this meeting, I have a meeting with a girl from Facebook, mm -hmm. and then she wants to know more about the, the what I've been doing and everything. And the the thing is that I've been doing this for ten months. Yeah. So I don't know everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm beginning, but one thing that he, that the sourcer need is to feel confident and and feel that is adding value and and to add value because a lot of people and i got surprised when i got the role it was like what do you do i don't know the difference be between a sorcerer and a recruiter uh can you tell me that and and oh so you do these and these and that oh yes recruiters are my clients my mm -hmm. main clients yeah so uh, I have to support them. I support them so they can support the business. So, uh, but sometimes uh, people used to make like a, a mess between sourcer and recruiters. And yeah. in some companies, I already saw that they are like competing with each other mm. and they should be in the same side. Yeah. So if you compete, you are not going to be able to deliver your best as a team. So you have to be partners. And if it's not working, uh, you need to figure out why it's not working. So I think this is the, a challenge too. And how is the community among sourcers in, well, in Brazil and in Latin America in, in general? Okay, we have uh, in Brazil, uh, the Brazil Sourcing Forum mm -hmm. that happens in Sao Paulo every three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. And we have, like, it's beginning, is we are now in the fourth meeting. Mm -hmm. 
that is going to happen on September, I think, or October. And then uh, a person from Monsanto, that mm -hmm. is Sheila, uh, asked me, "You would you like to join?" And 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 GE and GE and HP and Facebook and Monsanto. I think that we are now in twelve companies, PepsiCo, and and then uh, we created this group. And then we get together to talk about tools and sourcing perspective and what is sourcing. And then you can figure out that we are in different uh, uh, moments and mm, waves yeah. and in terms of knowledge and tools in each specific company. Because there are companies that have the sourcer, but they don't know exactly why, what they expect from the sourcer. And the sourcer doesn't know very well he is or her daily activities or yeah. the scope. In other companies, we have sourcing as a request or as a service. Yeah. So the business has to pay, I don't know, thousand yeah, dollars or two thousand dollars. Yeah. Exactly to like a fee to requ request the sourcing service. And sometimes you have the company that you have like three months to present a talent mapping. Uh, in other companies, you have to present it like in two days. So it's very different and it's hard to find a balance because sourcing, uh, believe me or not, is very new yeah. to some companies in Brazil. And in Latin America in general, uh, they used to have recruiters acting as sourcers and sourcers acting like recruiters. They are in the same uh, position right now. So it's not very well. And I see like, Sourcecom mm -hmm. and all the things that are based in Brazil or in Europe, and I think that in Latin America we have a lot to learn with Europe and US regarding sourcing because we are beginning in some specific things regarding the the role itself mm -hmm. that we need to to develop more. So I think that sometimes you are a way to ha ahead of us. <laughs> it's all about the kind of structure that's been used to. So like, I'm, I'm glad exactly. to hear that you started with the forum and that you know, more people are coming to that. And this networking is important because sometimes you're going to reach to me for a profile that I never did. But hey, Mark, this is like Simena from Peru. Yeah. She is the recruiter there. And you can talk to her and understand yeah. the main competitors and how they work and what are the pain points and, or everything. I think it's fantastic, this sourcing challenge, because you get to know everyone and you get to know that in the end of the day, maybe the challenges are the same. Yeah. Or uh, and, and we are just starting over in Latin America. I see a lot of things like Dean Da Costa mm -hmm. and all these gurus of sourcing. And, and when I look off what I do, okay, I reach this and this and that. I've been reading a lot. I've been delivering the results, but how can I get better? Thank you very much for your time. Let me know if you need anything um, from the community or anything from me to support, yeah, learning in Brazil. Okay. Um, I'll, uh, yeah, and let me know anything you need to, yeah, to help out the, the forum as well in Brazil or anybody in Latin America. I'm okay. happy to help. Okay. Thank you so much, Mark. It was my pleasure to, to, to have this conversation.